there, my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm a big fan of Pen BBS. A gentleman by the name of Zhilong Su is the lead designer of this group of Chinese pen enthusiasts that designs pens and have their designs manufactured for them. Well, Long, that's his nickname, he announced just a few weeks ago that he had produced a 14 karat gold nib prototype called Long's 100. We will be calling it the Pen BBS 100, and it is a faithful copy of the famous Hero 100 fountain pen, which in turn was derived from the classic Parker 51. There's a lot of pen history and innovation to unpack about this very new and very different pen design from Pen BBS. So let's take a look at it right now. <music> look at the pen bbs unboxing first let's have at it and what's next in the box well, there's something else in there and it's one of the special boxes Come on, three, three pens and no cats? Seriously? I'm going to lodge a complaint. I want to complain. You want to complain? Look at these shoes. I've only had them three weeks. And they haven't been <laughs> no, I want to complain if about them. complain, man. nothing happens. You might just as well not bother. And my back hurts. And whenever you have a fun day, I want to complain. Oh! Viney, where are my cats? I don't have enough cat stickers. I seriously am in need of more cat stickers. And there we go this is going to be very interesting this is the new and i got a feeling this is like a beta test this is the new pen bbs 100 and this is a 14 karat gold hooded nib in the style of a hero 100 which was the first chinese model of the parker 51. so this pen will get a full review we're all really interested uh, in this new development from long and pen bbs there are a few things i would like to do with this pen review I'd like to go over the parts and features of the pen, show some size comparisons, and do a writing sample. And I'll discuss my likes and dislikes after the writing sample, but I'd also like to talk about the evolution of this pen, and that will take us all the way back to 1939. So history buffs, stay tuned. But first let's talk about this pen and look at its parts and features. I'm going to call this new model from Pen BBS a prototype. Even though Long sold a number of these on Etsy a few weeks ago, the numbers were limited and the description had a bunch of caveats that are unusual for a vendor. Let's look at the sale. Here's a quote from the description. A test gold nib fountain pen by Long. The 14 karat gold nib was made and turned by Pen BBS. He used the mold of the Hero 100 for barrel production. As the mold is not very well made, the finish of the barrel is not good as other pens of Pen BBS. Please don't place order of this one if you cannot accept the finish of this pen." Unquote. Right off the bat, we see that the pen is not even really named the Pen BBS 100. It is Long's 100, which is made and turned by Pen BBS. That sounds like Long distancing himself from the corporate structure of the Pen BBS company, whatever that might be. He even says the pen is not up to pen BBS quality and warns not to buy it if that would be a problem for you. So this is very much what he says. It is a test gold nib by Long. And by that I read prototype. And I will review it as such. Long has stated that this is taken from a mold of a Hero 100. We will get into the iconic Hero 100's place in fountain pen history shortly. But suffice it to say, the Hero 100 is the most famous fountain pen in China. The Hero 100's design was derived from elements of the Parker 51, 61, 
and 21 fountain pens. Overall, we're looking at a demonstrator pen here with a brushed steel cap and a pointed finial similar to the Hero and the Parker, a clip identical to the Hero, and no brand markings anywhere on the outside, and a tapering clear injection molded plastic barrel ending in a screwed in pointed metal end finial, again identical to the Hero 100. We can see through the clear barrel that this has a cartridge converter inside. The cap slips off with the classic slip cap seal of the Hero and the Parker to reveal the classic long tapering hooded nib section developed in 1939 by Parker in the Parker 51. Again, because it's transparent, we can see the ink collector inside the long section and the 14 karat gold fine nib which long states produces a line between 0.35 and 0.45 millimeters. You can just see there the markings uh, of the 14 karat gold, 585 and 14K. The section is separated from the barrel by a slip cap clutch ring. The barrel unscrews, giving access to the cartridge converter. The Hero 100 models from the early 60s in China were aerometric fillers, like most of the original Parker 51s. Modern era Hero 100s have cartridge converters like this, and of course the Parker 51 disappeared from production in the early 70s. I think Long's description of this pen loses something in translation and makes it seem the pen is more awful than it is. Yes, this is injection molded plastic. It isn't of a quality you'd expect from pen BBS turned acrylics and the edges of this metal clutch ring right here are sharp and not well finished but it isn't terrible the converter seems to be on the cheap side it uh, doesn't have a substantial feel at all plastic is a bit soft and thin at least you can disassemble the converter for cleaning and maintenance other cheapo converters really don't do that Overall, I'm surprised by the relative quality of this pen. The description led me to expect something a lot worse. So perhaps there is method in Long's madness. The cap posts deeply and securely, as you would expect from a Parker 51 clone, and is very nicely balanced in the hand. You can write with it either posted or unposted, and that long tapering section allows you to right with it in any position. Of course we all want to see how the pen writes, especially with this gold nib. I'm expecting it not to be too much different from either this 1954 Parker 51 with a 14 karat gold nib or this Wingsong 618 with a steel nib. I expect all three to be stiff with little line variation. That's what these pens are like in my experience. But we shall see and ink acquiring minds want to know. But before I ink this pen up and do a writing sample, I want to elaborate on the evolution of this pen and speculate on what prompted its development. Speculation mode. After the writing sample, I'm going to speculate again on where I think Long might go with this model. But first, some history. Please use the chapter feature to skip ahead if you couldn't give a tinker's cuss for any of this background. Not caring a tinker's cuss about the struggling artist. And we'll see you on the other side. And now, a massage from the Swedish Prime Minister. Those of you remaining four or five people, thank you very much. Long's development of the Pen BBS 100 is Pen BBS's first foray into gold nib fountain pen territory. To the Western pen user, this might be considered odd. Why not take their flagship pen, the Pen BBS 308, and make a gold nib for this pen? There would be no redesign necessary. You have a hugely successful model with all the parts necessary already tooled up and ready to go. You just need to make a 14 karat gold nib, number six size, for this pen and you're off. I'd go for that pen in a heartbeat. 
But once you put Long and his PenBBS group of pen designers and enthusiasts together with an understanding of their motivations, culture, and not to mention Eastern market for pens, you begin to see the motivation for the 100 model. Long has stated that this pen is directly based on the Hero 100. The Hero 100 is an icon of Chinese fountain pen culture and community. It is the most storied and revered fountain pen in Chinese history. Most Chinese adults grew up with either a Hero 100 or a Hero 616 in their hands in school. As such, the pen enthusiasts who make up the pen BBS community of developers would rightly consider the Hero 100 Gold Nib to be the one to start their exploration and development of the first Gold Nib for the company. In every description of the Hero 100, you'll find some mention of it being a copy of the Parker 51, Parker 61, and Parker 21. It's interesting how a pen can be an exact copy of three different pens. It's not a copy, of course, but a refinement. I don't have a Hero 100. They are pricey and highly sought after, but this Pen BBS 100 seems to be a very close copy of it. It is much thinner than this Parker 51 from 1954. Hero is the largest, most well-known, and one of the oldest fountain pen manufacturers in China's history, being founded in 1931. When Parker was exploring moving some of their manufacturing offshore from the U.S. to China in the late 70s, it isn't surprising that they contacted Hero. The two companies worked together for months through the summer and fall of 1979 on the development of a Chinese-made Parker 45. Here is a Parker 45 from the 1970s. After prototypes were made and tested, the deal fell through from the Parker side and Parker compensated Hero for the failed deal by giving the tooling, technology, and designs of the Parker 45 to Hero. They basically gave them carte blanche permission to copy the Parker 45. Now this doesn't sound to me like a company that was upset about Hero stealing their pen designs. When you look at the linkages of political, sociological, cultural, and commercial history from the 1960s to today, the evolution of the Hero 100 to the Pen BBS 100 becomes pretty clear. Here's an overview of some of my thinking about this history. 1960s China. Mao Zedong's Cultural Revolution. Hero company controlled by the state and given a mandate, be better than Parker. The Hero 100 developed using the Parker 51, 61, and 21 as references. The Hero 100 developed for the Chinese market, not to compete with Parker in the West. Every student uses a version of the Hero 100, 565, 616, etc. 1972, Richard Nixon visits China. China is the largest new market in the world. 1976-77, Mao Zedong dies and Deng Xiaoping becomes the president. Deng begins to open the Chinese economy to the world and to foreign investment. 1979. Parker Vice President Philip Hall visits Hero Plant in China. Hero leadership visits Parker's Wisconsin headquarters, and a Chinese flag is flown outside the company headquarters. Hall proposes the development of a Chinese Hero-made Parker 45 for the Eastern market. The summer to the fall of 1979. Prototypes and testing. The deal falls through. Parker gifts the technology and design to Hero to produce their own version of the Parker 45. 2005. A Chinese pen forum group starts to produce fountain pen ink. In 2005, a 25-year-old Chinese pen enthusiast would have been born in 1980 and grown up with a Hero 100 or 616 in his hand. 2015. Pen BBS makes fountain pens. They begin making their own fountain pen designs in Western styles with number six size steel nibs and beautiful resins in the Italian fashion. 2020, Jialong Su makes the first gold nib pen in the style of the Hero 100. For those of you that skipped the history lesson, you're going to just totally suck on this pop quiz. I'm warning you, I may decide to set an exam this term. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. So just listen. 
Before we ink this pen, I have to tell you that I wrote long through Biney, the official pen BBS Etsy shopkeeper, and asked him if this pen could be disassembled. I didn't want to go at this pen with a pair of pliers and find that he had glued the section together. I got a very prompt response, which was both surprising and really nice. In case you were wondering, Long doesn't speak English. The answer was in the form of a video showing how to disassemble a Hero 100, all in Chinese. Long basically said, the Pen BBS 100 is functionally identical to the Hero 100. It was also a bit daunting to look at, so I'm not going to do it until after this review is complete, because it might not survive the surgery. Now let's ink this pen. I've refrained from selecting any of the cool inks I've recently received in favor of a standard blue ink that is very well behaved, was Iroshizuku Asagao. So let's do it. So now let's look at some size comparisons. Okay, here we are with the Pen BBS 100. And this is a 1954 Parker 51 and a Hero 616 and a Hero 565 and a Wingsung 618. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. And a couple of things to note here. The uh, clutch ring in the 616 is transparent through the center there so it acts as a little ink window which is really interesting the 565 here uh, doesn't have the Parker style clip it is a bit wider than all of these pens and has this distinctive little arrow on it here this pen resembles the Parker 61 more than the 51 and it posts very deeply indeed. You can see it posts and becomes the shortest of all of them. The other thing to note about the 618 Wingsung is that this is a piston filler. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Pen BBS. One hundred. And it is a fine. Fourteen karat gold. Nib. And the ink is a Roshizuku Asagao. Here is the swatch for Asagao. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it does have a little bit of a red sheen there. Here it is alongside some Dimene Sapphire Blue and KWZ Azure number five. And let's check the wetness. Well, it's not very wet and I'm not surprised, but this being a hooded nib uh, and fine, I'm not expecting it to be a gusher. As to line variation, well, that's no pressure. That's a little bit of pressure and I'm not getting any line variation to speak of. It is uniform. And in terms of smoothness, it's very smooth. I'll say very, very smooth, very pleasant with just a hint of feedback. And our writing sample. And 
and as to some reverse writing. Well, you know, it does do it, but it's very scratchy. And dry, and it's drying out. And some quick writing. See that it's starting to just turning it upside down like that. It's starting to get some ink starvation here. It seems to be keeping up a little bit better. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, first I should say that I'm not surprised at how this writes. It is a hooded nib. Being gold won't make that much difference from a gold hooded nib. The nib simply isn't big enough or broad enough to allow the softer than steel gold to have any spring to it at all. The line is very uniform. The pen writes well. It's consistent, although it's, it's drying out on me here for some reason or another. It seems to be writing pretty well now it's it tends to write very very consistently in terms of the line and in terms of the flow it's not a terrific flow it's not a gusher the line is uninspiring uh, it's like writing with a ballpoint almost like writing with a ballpoint and I expect this is going to be a reliable writer hooded nibs are like that they don't dry out I had this hero 616 inked up on my nightstand with a small uh, field notes booklet for just the odd note here and there uh, jotted down. I didn't use it for weeks and then pulled it out to write a phone number and it wrote instantly. So as a hooded nib fountain pen, it is nothing to write home about. You see what I did there? <laughs> I should mention a couple more features here. The clip is identical to the Hero 100 and is very usable and springy. In fact, it is spring-loaded inside that cap. The slip cap mechanism works very nicely and very silky smooth. Even though the clutch ring is sharp edged, when the pen is together like this, you don't feel that edge there at all. That is hardly noticeable. The pen posts beautifully and is well balanced. And the injection molded plastic seems flawless, it has no gate flashing or rough edges on it anywhere. As to the price tag, well, this pen really isn't worth something like $35 US, other than the fact that it is a prototype. This beautiful Wingsong 618 is only $13.97 US and takes a lot more ink being a piston filler and has a much better nib because it is that nib that I love. This one is a special Bobby bent nib, Mini Fude. I really like those. But that's not the point of this pen. The point of this pen is in its potential. It is in where Pen BBS might be going with this. Where is Long going with this? Well, let me speculate. First, I think this pen is directed at the Eastern market the huge market of writers of Eastern characters, a marketplace that has grown up with the Hero 100 in their hands. And this being a prototype, we will see if this pen is viable. Second, just think what this pen might be with Pen BBS's turned acrylic instead of this clear injection molded plastic. Can you see this pen in infinite with gold trim? I can. Can you see it in Galaxy with gold trim? Ooh, I can. How about Amber? How about Niangal? Or Tutsi? I can. Can they do it? I don't know. Can you turn a piece of acrylic down to this fine a point? Or would they have to add a plastic section and only use the acrylic on the barrels and the caps? Can they make a cap like this with a slip mechanism out of acrylic? 
I don't know. Maybe they would just use this brushed aluminum on the caps and use acrylic on the barrels. Maybe Long is giving Jin Hao a run for their money with their Jin Hao 51A. Here's a very interesting sunset looking acrylic on the barrel. Can you see a Pen BBS version of this Jin Hao 51A? I can. And inquiring minds want to know. All of this tells me one thing though. Pen BBS is one of the most innovative fountain pen companies in the world. With their selection of models and huge variety of beautiful resins and their constant introduction of new models and new filling systems, they are at the leading edge. And I can't wait to see what Long has for us next. And there you have it. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications of new videos. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.